Check, check, one, two. Yo, Nate P here out in Oregon again. Jesus, weather's crummy. We've become, oh my God. We're over at the Big Creek Fish Hatchery. I am so fucking excited. We're gonna be hanging out today with our good pal, Dr. Kelsey Smith. We're gonna be talking about chum salmon, the reintroduction and conservation of these beautiful, neat fish. I'm Nate P, your best chum. Kelsey Smith. Kelsey with two E's. She is the project leader of the Fuck. project leader for, I'm not this much of an idiot usually. We're going to have to cut this up a little bit. Dr. Kelsey Smith. She is the project leader for the program to restore Oregon's chum salmon. Okay, cool. Kelsey, are you around? Oh, hey, Nate. Oh, How's it hello, going? Oh, Dr. Kelsey. <laughs> nice to nice meet to you. Meet you. How are you I'm today? I'm great today. How are you? Very excited awesome. to be here. Give me your title, but do it backwards, please. Right. Um, so I am the leader project of the Parch. Salmon Chum Oregon's to restore, restore program. to program. Yeah, that's pretty good. Ish. Props. <laughs> Props. <laughs> when we rolled in from above and got to look down at this establishment, it is cool. It is really sweet. Yeah. It's a nice place to work. It's my job here to lead a crew uh, to help put Chum back out on the landscape. Cool. They used to be all over Oregon, okay. especially in tributaries of the lower Columbia River and they're not anymore. Why are the chum salmon not around anymore? Habitat loss and overfishing are the main things that you know, have caused chum salmon to decline over time. There's been dams, there's been water quality issues, ah. overdevelopment, all of that kind of stuff. So 100 yeah. years ago, they were like yeah. prevalent. Yeah, 1926, mm -hmm. estimated over a million chum returns. Wow. So yeah, literally 100 years ago. That was the run, a million yes. fish. Yes. What is it now? Here on the Oregon side, we're having a really good year if we have a couple thousand returns. Oh my God. Can we start maybe a little tour of this place and yeah. see what it's all about? This behind us is where all the fish come into the hatchery. You can see Big Creek Way kind of off in the distance. Yep. There is a weir that prevents the fish from going any further upstream. Gotcha, so it diverts them here. It totally does. So they get to this giant waterfall and they're like, oh man, I can't get over this waterfall. Where yeah. do I go? Uh -huh. And they go right into our hatchery here. And then hatchery workers or some of my crew can c come through and sort them all out. So this whole process right now, there's two different species of salmon running. Yep. And we're separating them so we can do our work with the chum. That's right. Okay. Yeah, so Ross is going to spawn the female chum yeah. for us over this really sophisticated okay. contraption here. Hey, it's consisting where it works. Consisting of a couple buckets and a common kitchen strainer. Okay. <laughs> um, Let's call it a Colin. A colander. And then the eggs are going to get transferred into a bucket here pretty okay. gently. And then because these are chum, we want to get a little bit more biological data from these guys. Gotcha. So we're going to measure the fecundity okay. or the number of eggs that each chum salmon has. And Do you so measure it by weight? We take weight and then we also uh, count the number of eggs in an ounce. Okay. So we've got uh, another person over here that is spawning the male to get the milk out. It just takes a little bit in each bucket of eggs. Yeah. It was real jelly swole around. Okay. Describe the texture. Um, s soft, bubbly. They feel so fragile. And so that's the beginning of the fertilization. And that's it, fertilization is over. When a male chum salmon loves a female very much. <laughs> <laughs> So this is where all the eggs are kept for all the different species that we spawn here cool. at Big Creek Hatchery. Is this the uh, famous spawning pallet I heard all about? This is it right here. Wonderful. You're lucky. Are we authorized? We're are you authorized. authorizing us? We're authorized. So after the fish are spawned, the eggs are brought up here into this building. In each one of these troughs, mm -hmm. there's at least a million eggs. Wow, really? It's really dark in here, except for this one little section. We want to keep the eggs in as low light as possible, okay. because that's what will be happening, happening in the natural environment, too. Gotcha. These guys are looking for dead eggs, and we don't want those in yeah. with all the other eggs, because they can start to develop fungus. Oh, sure. Sure. And it's sort of like one bad apple ruins the whole bunch yeah. kind of a thing. After the sorting has been done, after these eggs have been hatched, yep. where do they go from there? Uh. 
So this is pond 12. Okay. This is where all the chum will come after they're incubated in the egg house when they're literally this big, little babies, we'll put them out. How long do they stay here for? So chum are pretty quick. They only stay here a couple of months. Okay. Um, so they literally enter the ocean at a couple inches yeah. and they'll come back this big. Jeez. Right? So when these fish come back to spawn, mm -hmm. do they die then? Yes. Okay. All salmon that come back and spawn die at the they end. They die. They get one opportunity to spawn and then that's it. It's over. Chum salmon here in the Columbia River mm -hmm. on average have a 0.02% chance of survival. What? So that means for every 1,000 yeah. fry that go out, two will come back as oh adults. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. The fish have been reared in pool t number 12. Yep. Uh, they go into this contraption that you said was called the uh, reiteration destroyer. This is our liberation truck. The liberation <laughs> truck. We can use this truck to move the little tiny fry yeah. or the big fish um, oh, cool. when we do our reintroduction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is this the time where you'd like to show me an actual one of these fish? I would love to. Cool. Can I hold? You absolutely can. Can I hug? Yes. Can please. I kiss? Yes. So this is a female. <laughs> no, no but this is a male. This is a male. <laughs> and you can tell because of this nice big prominent nose yeah. that it's got. That's called a kite. These are the, the teeth that we were talking about earlier. Look at those teeth. Those They're dog gnarly. teeth. Yeah. Gnarly, gnarly teeth. Um, olive green in color and these reddish purple stripe, yeah. tiger stripes that make them They're just really so distinct. They're really beautiful. And these are our second biggest salmon here in the Pacific Northwest. Okay. Only Chinook are bigger. So this is the female. Yeah, it's just smaller. Small, a little bit smaller. Yeah. Still the same coloring here. But you'll see like less prominent in the nose, less prominent teeth. Yeah, they're so yeah, beautiful. They're they're really awesome. We're gonna take some of the extra chum that we didn't need to spawn today, okay. and we're gonna load them up in the Liberation Destroyer and take them to a reintroduction site so that we can release them there, and they will hopefully spawn on their own. And how many fish? We're going to try to put 40 in 40. this trailer. Cool. Yeah. Scott's going to be in the water. He's going to take a measurement yep. on each fish. 790. And he's going to tag them. We'll also take a fin clip from yeah. these guys, too, so that we can figure out if they're a hatchery fish and who they're related to. Sure. And then we'll hand that fish to Melissa, and she'll take it all the way up to the truck. Oh, cool. We're at Bear Creek, maybe about a 15, 20 minute ride from Big Creek Hatchery. Bear Creek has a small wild chum population mm -hmm. that spawns here. And so we like to reintroduce fish here just to kind of help supplement that population. What would the soundtrack, if you provide a soundtrack at this moment? Uh, for these fish being is there, released? Is there a song that comes to mind or uh, <laughs> maybe a... Dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> There's really a couple different reasons why we're doing this work. Uh, the first is that we're legally obligated to. Yeah. They are a federally federally protected species under the Endangered Species Act, so as a state agency, we're required to try to recover this species. Uh, the second reason, you know, as a scientist coming from a scientific perspective, yeah. you know, they play a really important part in our ecosystems. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of nutrient transfer that goes on that chum provide. They're just food for a bunch of different other species. Tons of different species. Yeah, the, the third reason to recover them is an economic one. Think of all of that economic benefit oh, that sure. the state of Oregon is missing out on. Yeah. Because everybody's going to Alaska to see these epic chum runs. Yeah. Historically, chum were one of the most popular fish in all of the canneries that we had okay. here in the lower Columbia. Because they aren't here anymore, none of those are sustainable. Yeah. They're important culturally to yeah. a lot of different people here in the state of Oregon. So why do we do this? Those four reasons. Yeah. Thank you yeah. one million times for letting us come and do this. Of course. No, I'm really happy to have you guys out here. Yeah. There's not a lot of attention that gets paid to Chum. That's the most awkward handshake that there's been. <laughs> cool. This has been so great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thank